the twenty-first book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by phil schempf the twenty-first book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument penelope proposeth now to him that draws ulysses boat her instant nuptials Ithacus, Eumaeus, and Philetius gives charge for guarding of the gates, and he his shaft shoots through the plates. Another argument. Phi. The nuptial vow and game rehearsed, drawn is the bow, the steels are pierced. Pallas, the goddess with the sparkling eyes, excites Penelope to object a prize the bow and bright steels to the wooer's strength and here began the strife and blood at length she first ascended by a lofty stair her utmost chamber of whose door her fair and half transparent hand received the key bright brazen bitted passing curiously and at it hung a knob of ivory and this did lead her where was strongly kept the treasure royal in whose store lay heaped gold brass and steel engraven with infinite art the crooked bow and arrowy quiver part of that rich magazine in the quiver were arrows a number sharp and sighing gear the bow was given by kind eurydotes iphitus fashioned like the deities to young ulysses when within the roof of wise orsilicus their pass had proof of mutual meeting in messina where ulysses claimed a debt to whose pay were the whole messenian people bound since they from ithaca had forced a wealthy prey of sheep and shepherds in their ships they thrust three hundred sheep together for whose just and instant rendry old laertes sent ulysses his ambassador that went a long way in the embassy yet then bore but the foremost prime of youngest men his father sending first to that affair his gravest counsellors and then his heir Iphitus made his way there, having lost twelve female horse, and mules commended most for use of burthen, which were after cause of death and fate to him. For, past all laws of hospitality, Jove's mighty son, skilled in great acts, was his confusion close by his house, though at that time his guest, respecting neither the opposed feast and hospitable table that in love he set before him, nor the voice of Jove, but seizing first his mares, he after slew his host himself from those mares search now grew ulysses known to iphitus who that bow at their encounter did in love bestow which great eurytus's hand had borne before iphitus's father who at death's sad door in his steep turrets left it to his son ulysses gave him a keen falchion and mighty lance and thus began they there their fatal loves for after never were their mutual tables to each other known because jove's son the unworthy part had shown of slaughtering this godlike loving man eurytus's son who with that bow began and ended love to ulysses who so dear a gift esteemed it that he would not bear in his black fleet that guest right to the war but in fit memory of one so far in his affection brought it home and kept his treasure with it where till now it slept and now the queen of women had intent to give it use and therefore made ascent up all the stairs height to the chamber door whose shining leaves two bright pilasters bore to such a close when together went it would resist the air in their consent the ring she took then and did draw aside a bar that ran within and then implied the key into the lock which gave a sound the bolt then shooting as in pasture ground a bull doth low and make the valleys ring so loud the lock hummed when it loosed the spring and ope the doors flew in she went along the lofty chamber that was boarded strong with heart of oak which many years ago the architect did smooth and polish so that now as then he made it freshly shine and tried the evenness of it with a line there stood in this room presses that enclosed robes odiferous by which reposed the bow upon pins nor from it far hung the round quiver glittering like a star both which her white extended hand took down then sat she low and made her lap a crown of both these relics which she wept to see and cried quite out with loving memory of her dear lord 
to whose worth paying then kind debts enow she left and to the men vowed to her wooing brought the crooked bow and shaft receiving quiver that did flow with arrows beating sighs up where they fell then with another chest replete as well with games won by the king of steel and brass her maids attended past whom making pass to where her wooers were she made her stay amidst the fair hall door and kept the ray of her bright countenance hid with veil so thin that though they seemed to expose they let love in her maids on both sides stood and thus she spake hear me ye wooers that a pleasure take to do me sorrow and my house invade to eat and drink as if it were only made to serve your rapines my lord long away and you allowed no colour for your stay but his still absence striving who shall frame me for his wife and since tis made a game i here propose divine ulysses bow for that great masterpiece to which ye vow he that can draw it with least show to strive and through these twelve axe heads an arrow drive him will i follow and this house forego that nourished me a maid now furnished so with all things fit and which i so esteem that i shall still live in it in my dream this said she made eumaeus give it them he took and laid it by and wept for woe and like him wept philetius when the bow of which his king was bare he beheld their tears and tenuous's manhood much refelled and said ye rustic fools that still each day your minds give over to this vain dismay why weep ye wretches and the widow's eyes tempt with renewed thought that would otherwise dispose her sorrows since her lord is dead and tears are idle sit and eat your bread nor whisper more a word or get ye gone and weep without doors let this bow alone to our outmet contention for i fear the bow will scarce yield draught to any here here no such man lives as laertes son amongst us all i knew him thought puts on his looks sight now methinks though then a child thus showed his words doubt yet his hopes instilled his strength the stretcher of ulysses string and his steel's piercer but his shaft must sing through his pierced pallet first whom he so wronged in his free roof and made the rest ill-tongued against his virtues then the sacred heat that inspired his son did further set their confidence on fire and said o friends job hath bereft my wits the queen intends though i must grant her wise ere long to leave ulysses court and to her bed receive some other lord yet notwithstanding i am forced to laugh and set my pleasures high like one mad sick but wooers since ye have an object for your trials now so brave as all the broad achaean earth exceeds as sacred pylos as the argive breeds as black epirus as mycenae's birth and as the more famed ithacensian earth all which yourselves well know and oft have said for what need hath my mother of my aid in her advancement tender no excuse for least delay nor too much time profuse in stay to draw this bow but draw it straight shoot and the steels pierce make all see how slight you make these poor bars to so rich a prize no eagerer yet come all my faculty shall try the bow's strength and the pierced steel i will not for my reverend mother feel the sorrows that i know will seize my heart to see her follow any and depart from her so long-held home but first extend the bow and arrow to her tender end for i am only to succeed my sire in guard of his games and let none aspire to their besides possession this said his purple robe he cast off by he laid his well-edged sword and first a several pit he digged for every axe and strengthened it with earth close rammed about it on a rue he set them of one height by a line he drew along the whole twelve and so orderly did every deed belonging yet his eye never before beholding how twas done that in a maze stood all his lookers-on then stood he near the door and proved to draw the stubborn bow thrice tried and thrice gave law to his uncrowned attempts the fourth assay with all force offering which a sign gave stay given by his father 
though he showed a mind as if he stood right heartily inclined to perfect the exploit when all was done in only drift to set the wooers on his weakness yet confessed he said o oh, shame i either shall be ever of no name but prove a wretch or else i am too young and must not now presume on power so strong as sinews yet more growing may engraft to turn a man quite over with a shaft besides to men whose nerves are best prepared all great adventures at first proof are hard but come you stronger men attempt this bow and let us end our labour thus below a well-joined board he laid it and close by the brightly headed shaft then throned his thigh amidst his late left seat antinous then bade all arise but first who did sustain the cup state ever and did sacrifice before they ate still and that man bade rise since on the other's right hand he was placed because he held the right hand's rising graced with best success still this discretion won supreme applause and first rose enops's son Lyades, that was priest to all the rest sat lowest with the cup still and their jest could never like but ever was the man that checked their follies and he now began to taste the bow the sharp shaft took tugged hard and held aloft and till he quite had marred his delicate tender fingers could not stir the churlish string who therefore did refer the game to others saying that the same bow in his presage would prove the overthrow of many a chief man there nor thought the fate was any whit austere since death's short date were much the better taken than long life without the object of their amorous strife from whom they had burned out so many days to find still other nothing but delays obtaining in them and affirm that now some hope to have her but when that tough bow they all had tried and seen the utmost done they must rest pleased to cease and now some one of all their other fair-veiled grecian dames with gifts and dower and hymeneal flames let her love light to him that most will give and whom the nuptial destiny did drive thus laid he on the well-joined polished board the bow and bright piled shaft and then restored his seat his right to him antinous gave bitter language and reproved him thus what words Lyodes, pass thy speeches guard that tis a work to bear and set so hard they set up my disdain this bow must end the best of us since thy arms cannot lend the string least motion thy mother's throes brought never forth thy arms to draught of bows or knitting shafts off though thou canst not draw the sturdy plant thou art to us no law Belantheus, light a fire and set thereat a chair and cushions and that mass of fat that lies within bring out that we may set our pages to this bow to see it het and suppled with the suet and then we may give it draught and pay this great decree utmost performance he a mighty fire gave instant flame put into act the entire command laid on him chair and cushions set laid on the bow which straight the pages het chafed suppled with the suet to their most and still was all their unctuous labour lost all wooers strengths too indigent and poor to draw that bow antinous's arms it tore and great eurymachus's the both clear best yet both it tired and made them glad to rest forth then went both the swains and after them divine ulysses when being past the extreme of all the gates with winning words he tried their loves and this asked shall my counsels hide their depths from you my mind would gladly know if suddenly ulysses had his vow made good for home and had some god to guide his steps and strokes to wreak these wooers pride would your aids join on his part or with theirs how stand your hearts affected they made prayers that some god would please to return their lord he then should see how far they would afford their lives for his he seeing their truth replied i am your lord though many a sufferance tried arrive now here whom twenty years have held from forth my country yet are not concealed from my sure knowledge your desires to see my safe return 
of all the company now serving here besides not one but you mine ear hath witnessed willing to bestow their wishes of my life so long held dead i therefore vow which shall be perfected that if god please beneath my hand to leave these wars lifeless ye shall both receive wives from that hand and means and near to me have houses built to you and both shall be as friends and brothers to my only son and that ye may well know me and be won to that assurance the infallible sign the white-toothed boar gave this marked knee of mine when in parnassus he was held in chase by me and by my famous grandsire's race i'll let you see thus severed he his weed from that his wound and every word had deed in their sure knowledges which made them cast their arms about him his broad breast embraced his neck and shoulders kissed and him as well did those true powers of human love compel to kiss their heads and hands and to their moan had sent the free light of the cheerful sun had not ulysses broke the ruth and said cease tears and sorrows lest we prove displayed by some that issue from the house and they relate to those within take each his way not all together in but one by one first i then you and then see this be done the envious wooers will by no means give the offer of the bow and arrow leave to come at me spite then their pride do thou my good eumaeus bring both shaft and bow to my hand's proof and charge the maids before that instantly they shut every door that they themselves if any tumult rise beneath my roofs by any that envies my will to undertake the game may gain no passage forth but close at work contain with all free quiet or at least constrained and therefore my philetius see maintained when close the gates are shut their closure fast to which end be it thy sole work to cast their chains before them this said in he led took first his seat and then they seconded his entry with their own then took in hand eurymachus the bow made close his stand aside the fire at whose heat here and there he warmed and suppled it yet could not steer to any draught the string with all his art and therefore swelled in him his glorious heart affirming that himself and all his friends had cause to grieve not only that their ends they missed in marriage since enough besides kind grecian dames there lived to be their brides in ithaca and other bordering towns but that to all times future their renowns would stand disparaged if ulysses bow they could not draw and yet his wife would woo antinous answered that there could ensue no shame at all to them for well he knew that this day was kept holy to the sun by all the city and there should be done no such profane act therefore bade lay by the bow for that day but the mastery of axes that were set up still might stand since that no labour was nor any hand would offer to invade ulysses house to take or touch with surreptitious or violent hand what there was left for use he therefore bade the cup-bearer infuse wine to the bowls that so with sacrifice they might let rest the shooting exercise and in the morning make melanthius bring the chief goats of his herd that to the king of bows and archers they might burn the thighs for good success and then attempt the prize the rest sat pleased with this the herald straight poured water on their hands each page did wait with his crowned cup of wine served every man till all were satisfied and then began ulysses plot of his close purpose thus hear me ye much renowned eurymachus and king antinous in chief who dwell and with decorum sacred doth compel this day's observance and to let lay down the bow all this light giving gods their own the morning's labour god the more will bless and strength bestow where he himself shall please against which time let me presume to pray your favours with the rest that this assay may my old arms prove trying if there lie in my poor powers the same activity that long since crowned them or if needy fare and desolate wanderings have the web worn bare of my life's thread at all parts that no more can furnish these affairs as heretofore this het their spleen's past measure blown with fear lest his loathed temples would the garland wear of that bow's draught and tenuous using speech to this sour purpose 
thou most errant wretch of all guests breathing in no least degree graced with a human soul it serves not thee to feast in peace with us take equal share of what we reach to sit and all things here that we speak freely which no begging guest did ever yet but thou must make request to mix with us in merit of the queen but wine inflames thee that hath ever been the bane of men whoever yet would take the excess it offers and the mean forsake wine spoiled the centaur great eurition in guest rites with a mighty-minded son of bold ixion in his way to war against the lapathies who driven as far as madness with the bold effects of wine did outrage to his kind host and declined other heroes from him feasted there with so much anger that they left their cheer and dragged him forth the forecourt slit his nose cropped both his ears and in the ill dispose his mind then suffered drew the fatal day on his head with his host for thence the fray between the centaurs and the lapathies had moral act but he for his excess in spoil of wine fared worse himself as thou for thy large cups if thy arms draw the bow my mind foretells shall fear for not a man of all our consort that in wisdom can boast any fit share will take prayers then but to echethus the most stern of men a black sail freight with thee whose worst of ill be sure is past all ransom sit then still drink temperately and never more contend with men your youngers this the queen did end with her defence of him and told his foe it was not fair nor equal to overcrow the poorest guests her son pleased to entertain in his free turrets with so proud a strain of threats and bravings asking if he thought that if the stranger to his arms had brought the stubborn bow down he should marry her and bear her home and said himself should err in no such hope nor of them all the best that grieved at any good she did her guests should banquet there since it in no sort showed no bless in them nor paid her what she owed her own free rule there this eurymachus confirmed and said nor feeds it hope in us icarius's daughter to solemnize rites of nuptials with thee nor in noblest sights it can show comely but to our respects the rumour both of sexes and of sects amongst the people would breed shame and fear lest any worst greek said see men that were of mean deservings will presume to aspire to his wife's bed whom all men did admire for fame and merit could not draw his bow and yet his wife had foolish pride to woo when straight an errant beggar comes and draws the bow with ease performing all the laws the game besides contained and this would thus prove both indignity and shame to us the queen replied the fame of men i see bears much price in your great supposed degree yet who can prove amongst the people great that of one so esteemed of them the seat doth so defame and ruin and beside with what right is this guest thus vilified in your high censures when the man in blood is well composed and great his parents good and therefore give the bow to him to try his birth and breeding by his chivalry if his arms draw it and that phoebus stands so great a glory to his strength my hands shall add this guerdon every sort of weed a two-edged sword and lance to keep him freed from dogs and men hereafter and dismiss his worth to what place tends that heart of his her son gave answer that it was a wrong to his free sway in all things that belong to guard of that house to demand the bow of any wooer and the use bestow upon the stranger for the bow was his to give or to withhold no masteries of her proposing giving any power to impair his right in things for any wooer or any that rough ithaca affords any that elis of which no man's words nor powers should curb him stood he so inclined to see the bow in absolute gift resigned to that his guest to bear and use at will and therefore bade his mother keep her still amongst her women at her rock and loom bows were for men and this bow did become past all men's his disposure since his sire left it to him and all the house entire she stood dismayed at this and in her mind his wide's words laid up standing so inclined as he had willed with all her women going up to her chamber there her tears bestowing as every night she did on her loved lord 
till sleep and pallas her fit rest restored the bow eumaeus took and bore away which up in tumult and almost in fray put all the wars one inquiring thus whither rogue abject wilt thou bear from us that bow proposed lay down or i protest thy dog shall eat thee that thou nourishest to guard thy swine amongst whom left of all thy life shall leave thee if the festival we now observe to phoebus may our zeals grace with his aid and all the deities else this threat made good eumaeus yield the bow to his late place not knowing what might grow from such a multitude and then fell on telemachus with threats and said sit gone that bow yet further tis no servant's part to serve too many masters raise your heart and bear it off lest though you're younger yet with stones i pelt you to the field with it if you and i close i shall prove too strong i wish as much too hard for all this throng the gods would make me i should quickly send some after with just sorrow to their end they waste my victual so and ply my cup and do me such shrewd turn still this put up the wooers all in laughters and put down their angers to him that so late were grown so grave and bloody which resolved that fear of good eumaeus who did take and bear the king the bow called nurse and bade her make the doors all sure that if men's tumults take the ears of some within they may not fly but keep at work still close and silently these words put wings to her and close she put the chamber door the court gates then were shut by kind philetius who straight did go out from the hall and in the portico found laid a gable of a ship composed of spongy bulrushes with which he closed in winding round about them the court gates then took his place again to view the fates that quickly followed when he came he saw ulysses viewing ere he tried to draw the famous bow which every way he moved up and down turning it in which he proved the plight it was in fearing chiefly lest the horns were eat with worms in so long rest but what his thoughts intended turning so and keeping such a search about the bow the wooers little knowing fell to jest and said past doubt he is a man professed in boyer's craft and sees quite through the wood or something certain to be understood there is in this his turning of it still a cunning rogue he is at any ill then spake another proud one would to heaven i might at will get gold till he hath given that bow his draught with these sharp jests did these delightsome wooers their fatal humours please but when the wise ulysses once had laid his fingers on it and to proof surveyed the still sound plight it held as one of skill in song and of the harp doth at his will in tuning of his instrument extend a string out with his pin touch all and lend to every well-wreathed string his perfect sound struck all together with such ease drew round the king the bow then twanged he up the string that as a swallow in the air doth sing with no continued tune but pausing still twinks out her scattered voice in accent shrill so sharp the string sung when he gave it touch once having bent and drawn it which so much amazed the wooers that their colours went and came most grievously and then jove rent the air with thunder which at heart did cheer the now enough sustaining traveller that jove again would his attempt enable then took he into hand from off the table the first drawn arrow and a number more spent shortly on the wooers but this one he measured by his arm as if not known the length were to him knocked it then and drew and through the axes at first hole flew the steel charged arrow which when he had done he thus bespake the prince you have not won disgrace yet by your guest for i have struck the mark i shot at and no such toil took in wearying the bow with fat and fire as did the wooers yet reserved entire thank heaven my strength is and myself am tried no man to be so basely vilified as these men please to think me but free way take that and all their pleasures and while day holds her torch to you and the hour of feast hath now full date give banquet and the rest poem and harp that grace a well-filled board this said he beckoned to his son whose sword he straight girt to him took to his hand his lance and complete armed did to his sire advance 
End of the 21st Book